Hi guys, my name is Abby and today we are going to be doing a bookshelf tour. Now the reason why I'm wanting to do this is not because my bookshelf is impressive whatsoever, but I want to get it to be. I used to be really big on not wanting to spend money on books so I was constantly just going to the library and you know renting out my books there which if you do not see yourself as a collector if you try to if you would like to save money if you just don't have I don't know if you just don't feel the need to spend a lot of money on books then the library is an amazing option and I fully support our local libraries. For me, there is something so satisfying about having a beautifully crafted, very full, beautiful bookshelf and that is what I'm trying to achieve right now in the room, in the space that I have set up. This room is just not set up to hold books, you know? I just don't have the room with my, with my furniture to have a very good setup right now. So my bookshelf is actually in my closet, which is going to be really fun to try to film this, trying to get in the right angles and stuff. So that's why I'm doing my intro over here in my um, really, really comfy chair. I really want to do a room tour soon. That way you guys can kind of get an idea about how my room is set up. But this wall right here is actually, like my bed is actually right here beside me. I really want to put bookshelves up over my bed all across this wall because this is the only wall right here that is not intercepted by anything. Like this wall has a huge window, that wall has the entrance to my room so my door is right there, and the wall over there has my closet and then the entrance to my bathroom. So this is the only wall that has literally nothing like interceding it, nothing on it, so I really want to be able to put bookshelves so I can put all my books across here. And I'm already running out of room on my bookshelf and you will see that coming up soon. So let's go ahead and jump into that and so, so I can just stop blabbering on here. Let's jump on over there. Let's go. All right, you guys, here we are. We are in the bookshelf. We are also in my closet. So my book, my bookshelf is still the place where I can still technically do that. I don't have too many books going on in here. So I can kind of share with you guys the books that I have and kind of how I have them organized for now. They're kind of haphazardly done right now. So up here on the top shelf is where I keep all of my books that I have not read yet. So this is kind of an easy way for me to be able to see what I have, what I'm going to want to read, and that kind of thing. So that way I can keep myself organized. First one I have is The Glass Sword by Victoria Aveyard. And this is the sequel to Red Queen, which... I will be getting to where that is in a little bit. So then I have Lady Midnight by Cassandra Clare right here, waiting to be read as well. I have Beautiful Creatures by um, Garcia Stoll. I have The Fifth Wave by um, Rick Yancey. There is a sequel to this one called The Infinite Sea, so if I enjoy this one, which I most likely will, then I will be purchasing that one. Next I have the, um, this one is called Cinder. This is by um, Marissa Meyer, and this one is The Lunar Chronicles. I'm sure a lot of people have either read or seen about this one, but this one has a bunch of books that follow this one. And I'm sure that you guys might be already noticing a pattern. I have a lot of books of like the first books. What I try to do for the most part is I will read the first one first, get a sense of if I like it, and then I'll purchase all of them simply because I have a bad habit of buying all of one series and then truly not liking it and it being a huge waste of money, which is no good. So then next I have Throne of Glass by Sarah Moss and this one has a bunch of ones that come after it. I've heard nothing but amazing things about this book so I'm excited to read this one. I have um, Elegy by Amanda Hawking and this one um, has some more as well. I picked this one up from the uh, $3.97 bargain. I get a lot of my books from there. Um, simply because you might you normally find some pretty good reads in there and they're really cheap so try this I'm gonna try this one out and see if I like it so next I have a bleeding violet which this is a bargain priced one as well and this one I bought so long ago now that I truly don't even remember what this one is about but this one is by Dia Reeves then I have um where it begin by um, by Anne Stampler and this one 
was only three dollars as well so then i have um this is forever princess by meg cabot this is also a 3.97 one this one is a book that my friend gave me that she said that she really wants me to read because she thinks that i will enjoy it this is called um the name of the star shades of london by maureen johnson then i have another bargain price one i love these books so much this one is 17th summer by maureen dolly dally I'm not 100% sure. This one is all about just a high school romance. These are books that I love to read whenever I'm just like laying out on a hammock or just relaxing in the summertime. So I will probably be going through a lot of these books, like a lot of the Bargain One books over the summertime just because these are normally really easy reads and they're just fun to, fun to read. And then I have Defiance by CJ Redwine. Then up here, I'm going to go ahead and just show you all three of these. These, this is the, the Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. This is the uh the three that come in this series so you have the first one and then you have hollow city and then you have library of souls then this is another bargain price one again guys i love these so much this one is the looking glass wars by frank bador bador the next one i have is wither and i did try to take off the three dollar sticker but that is it's still hanging out um it is this is wither by um lauren defis Desterano. I apologize. Then the last book that I have on my to read shelf is Dorothy Must Die by Danielle Page. I've heard really really good things about the series so everything else on my bookshelf I have read before. Okay so starting way over here I have my House of the Night novel series and this one it starts off with March and I have these all the way up to the burned one and I actually did not realize but since then I think she's come out with like three or four more of the series and I just either ran out of either patience interest I don't know what but I am definitely gonna try to probably pick all these back up and try to reread them and then I will add to it and then I also do have the fledging handbook 101 these are all by P um, PC cast and Kristen cast and then beside that I have the divergent trio by Veronica Roth so then beside there I have my Twilight by Stephanie Meyer series all right and so then the other two that I have right over here I have Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard and then I also have my a hot glue gun mess by Mr. Kate which is my only youtuber book and will probably be the only youtuber book that i own then we are moving down to the next shelf where starting over here i have the fault in our stars by john green then i have struck by lightning by chris colfer i got this as well as the next two ones back when glee was still a really big thing and he was coming out with all these books they are all really honestly pretty good i actually enjoyed this this one a lot as well as what he is really well known for, which is the land of stories. This is all about the different fairy tale ones that he has. So I have the wishing spell and I have the enchantress returns. I think he now has, I think the third one is now out and he is getting ready to put the fourth one out or something of that sort, but I don't remember exactly 100%. Then after that I have The Clockwork Angel by, by Cassandra Clare. This is the only one of like the TMI and the Infernal Devices books that I own of hers simply because all the other ones I, um, I, per I got at the library and this one my friend had and she let me keep it after I finished reading. Then the entire rest of this um, of this one is all dedicated to Harry Potter. So I have all of the hardback versions. I have three um, paperback ones. And then I have this one that I found over in, when I was in London, my parents and I went um, to this like little farmer's market, like little market, and we found this one, which I thought was just beautiful anyways. I thought the, um, the look of the actual book was beautiful. So I just picked it up as like a little reminder of how amazing that trip was. And I love it so much. All right, and then this shelf is not nearly as fun whatsoever. So pretty much over on this side, I have all of my books, binders and stuff that I need for school, which as I get more books and as the books that I read start coming down, these will move out of the way for them. But these are kind of all of my more, I guess, more boring books, I guess. So I have this etiquette book that I needed for one of my classes for school. I have The Disney Way. It's a marketing and business book all about The Disney Way, which I needed for a class. 
I have this Shakespeare, the Sonnets and Narrative Poems, a complete non-dramatic poetry. I have the Dracula book, which I'm sure we're all pretty familiar with. I have the um, Immortal Poems of the English Language, which all of these I needed for some type of school purposes. That's what those are all for. I have the girls book, How to Be the Best at Everything. <laughs> and then I have my Holy Bible and then two versions of the Book of Mormon. So I have all of those on that shelf. Hey guys, and the final shelf that I have down here is pretty much my pride and joy. All right, so we're gonna start over here on the right. So the first thing that I have is my Phantom of the Opera sheet that I got when I went to go see it on Broadway. And then I have this little thing. This is called The Beatrice Letters by Lemony Snicket. This is when I was absolutely obsessed obsessed with the series of unfortunate events and I'm so excited that the series is coming to Netflix in August. Oh, it's gonna be so good. I'm pumped. I'm pumped. The next thing I have in here is my The Wicked, the behind the scenes look at the hit Broadway musical. All right, so next is that this is the Lost Files of Nancy Drew because I am a huge Nancy Drew reader. I did recently just give, I had the entire Nancy Drew series and I did recently just give it to my cousin who is just as big of a reader as I am. She is nine and is loving the books just as much as I did, which is so exciting. And then all the rest of this stuff has to do with Harry Potter in some way or another. So the first thing that I have is, this is from the library. Library of Hogwarts so it has two different books in here which is the Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them and then Quidditch Through the Ages and then the next thing that I have is the Harry Potter the Beetle and the Bard of course by JK Rowling and then this one is by Emerson Sparts and Jen Schoen I don't know this is this is MuggleNets.com Harry Potter should have died these are contra controversial views from the fan site MuggleNet. So next, this one is um, by Melissa Anali, and this is Harry, A History. This is a true story of a boy wizard, his fans, and the life inside the Harry Potter phenomenon. So this one is pretty much just t talking all about the fans and the kind of behind the scenes stuff. And this was a really, really good read. Then I have Mapping the World of the Sorcerer's Apprentice, which this was um, this was an unauthorized exploration of the Harry Potter series completed through book six. And this one is just, again, kind of a behind the scenes of people just talking about different things like... Um, like the Dursleys as social commentary to Sir with Love um, and just talking about different things about that people think about the book which I just find. I love books like this. I think they are so interesting and I love getting to see different people's opinions about things. So then I have the unofficial Harry Potter cookbook. Then I have the Lexicon which is an un unauthorized guide to Harry Potter fiction and related materials. This is by Stephen by Steve Vark by Steven van der Ark and this is literally just like almost like a dictionary of all the different things mentioned in the Harry Potter world. So then I have the Sorcerer's Guide, a guide of the magical world of Harry Potter. This is by Alan Krantz and Elizabeth Krantz. I guess they're married maybe? Who knows? Best friends? Brothers? Sister? Who knows? And this just talks about different things about the world of Harry Potter. So like there's like curses. So it talks all about the different curses that there might be. There's uh, dreams. So different dreams. Uh, goblins. Then I have the Harry Potter a pop-up book based on the film Phenomenon. So this one is really, really cool because it pops up. So then I have these next four ones are very, very special to me. So this one is the Harry Potter the Creature Vault. And this one just has, it talks, it's just the creatures and plants that are in Harry Potter. So you just get to learn all about the different types of creatures, like the background, the creating of them. And this is the kind of stuff that I love to read about. And then I have one that's very, very similar as well, but this is Magical Places from the film. So this one, you get to see all about like locations and... So we have like, the, the first one is like the Dursley house. So you get to learn all about Privet, Privet Drive and what that took to creating it. And there's different types of ones. So there's like the Slytherin common room. So you get to learn about that. And then I have my Harry Potter, the film wizardry. This is from the creative team behind the movie series. So much about what it took to bring, to bring this place to life. So there's like the Hogwarts grounds. There's Rubius Hagrid with Robbie, with Robbie Catrain. Yay! 
And then the last book that I have, which is a huge, it's so heavy. This is my Harry Potter page to screen and it is huge and it's hefty. This one is the complete magic making journey. And this one is just it's just huge and it's colorful and it's beautiful and it's everything okay oh, hey guys so I thought this would be a great place to end out my video so I just showed you guys everything that I have on my bookshelf and yeah <laughs> the main reason why I wanted to film this video is simply because I wanted you guys all to get to see my bookshelf at the beginning so I just have really I have a lot of hopes and dreams for my bookshelves and my reading to just expand so much over the next few years and I want to take you guys on this journey with me and I thought that this would be the best way to just show you guys from the beginning what my bookshelf looks like so we can like look back maybe in a year or so and be like oh my gosh her journey and everything has just moved along so much she's read so much and things like that and I'm very proud about where my bookshelf is right now I have a lot of Harry Potter things because Harry Potter is one of my favorite things in the world to read about it's my one of my favorite worlds it's my favorite book it's what got me reading when I was little because my mom used to read Harry Potter to me every night before I went to bed and it's it's something that I love I want to get a lot more Disney books like a lot more like behind the scenes Disney things um, and I want to also collect just some of the like the Brothers Grimm things. Yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this look into my bookshelf and the type of reading that I like to do. And yeah. <laughs> um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe so that we can all become friends and we can talk about books because I love talking about books. It's my favorite thing in the world. And Yes, we will, I will see you all very, very soon with my next video. Bye, guys!